Hey guys, what's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing with my Aaliyah discography journey and I'm reopening this series because it felt wrong to end my Aaliyah discography journey with only three albums. I listened to her three albums, AJ Nothing But A Number, One In A Million, and her self-titled from 2001. And that's it because we all know what happened to Aaliyah, unfortunately, her untimely death. So I felt like... Of course, there was a lot more that Aaliyah could have done. Her life ended so tragically, and it felt wrong to end my Aaliyah series with only three albums. So, I feel like I owe it to Aaliyah to listen to more of her music. So that's why I'm digging into her two posthumous albums, I Care For You, and also Ultimate Aaliyah. Now, I typically don't like listening to posthumous albums on my channel because it feels wrong to listen to music released from a record label where the artist didn't have a say in the material being released because they are obviously dead. So it always rubbed me the wrong way, but I am making an exception for Aaliyah because I genuinely want to explore more of her music. And I also feel like, like I said already, her life ended too quickly. So she had a lot more to give. And that's why I want to explore more music from her. I'm also quite excited to listen to I Care For You, the song, because I wasn't able to listen to that song when I did a video for her self-titled 2001 Aaliyah album, The Red Album, because at the time, the album wasn't available on streaming services like Apple Music. But now it is, but at the time it wasn't, so I had to actually listen to all the songs from that album via... YouTube, and unfortunately, I Care For You was nowhere to be found. It was blocked everywhere in my country, so I couldn't listen to it, but now I can finally listen to it. Now, I did curate a playlist for this video of songs from her I Care For You compilation album, and also Ultimate Aaliyah. All of these songs, from my understanding, are songs I've never heard before. So there are 15 songs, and this playlist is 1 hour and 4 minutes. So we will be kicking off this video with tracks from her I Care For You compilation album, which was released in December of 2002, so just over a year after her death. There are 7 songs from this compilation album that I don't recall hearing before, so I'm very much excited for that. So enough talking, let's get into the first track, which is I Care For You. <laughs> I expecting anything less? No. Wow, that was... <sighs> wow, what a hot and steamy song. So seductive, especially the overall production of the track and Aaliyah's vocals, the way she whispers into your ear. It's very sensual and it's a very romantic song. This is the sort of song that you make love to. It's a slow burn. It's like lighting a candle in a dark room and rolling around in silk bed sheets. And it's a very loving, caring song, but also sexy and sensual and just romantic and hot and steamy. And 
It's a great track. Hey, my baby, why are you looking so down? Seems like you need a love it. Baby, you need a girl like me around. Hey, my baby, tell me why you cry. Here, take my hand and wipe those tears from your eyes. Can I talk to you, comfort you, let you know I care for you? And then she goes on to say, Hey, sexy baby, why'd your girl leave you in pain? To let a fine man like you go, she must be insane. So this guy's distraught and hurt because his girlfriend left him, but Aaliyah is saying, how could she do that? You are such a great person. I care for you. She didn't care for you anymore, but I care for you. I think you're sexy and take my hand, I will help you, and I'll comfort you. So I like the message of the song. I also liked the overall production of the track, the subtle piano, and I liked the jazzier sound to the track. It's very soulful, and Timbaland was a producer on the track, so he had his hands all over this track, and it's quite obvious that he did. You can hear his beatboxing as well. One of the reasons why I enjoy this song so much is because not only is it sexy, but there's a lot of heart and meaning behind the lyrics as well. It's a very comforting song, as well as sexy. Now it looks like I Care For You was meant for Aaliyah's second album, One In A Million, but she decided to save this track for her third and final album, Aaliyah from 2001. I Care For You is a soft romantic R&B ballad whose female narrator, according to Aaliyah, says, Don't cry, I'll wipe your tears, I love you, just give me the chance to show you. I Care For You offers support to a guy stinging from a breakup. This was a great track and I can definitely see myself going back to it again in the future. So let's move on to track two. Are you that somebody? Wow, F me, honestly. That production, that Timbaland's overall production of this track was fire. Again, a hot, steamy, sexy... <laughs> Aaliyah should have released a song with that title. Hot, steamy, sexy, sexy, steamy, hot, something along those lines, I don't know, but... This was... this was great. I also found it intriguing that Timbaland used the sound of a crying baby during parts of the production. And he used it quite tastefully. I don't know if it was an actual crying baby or audio was manipulated to sound like a crying baby. I'm assuming it was a crying baby, which who wants to use that as a production device in their song? But it actually works and it doesn't sound jarring because honestly, the sound of a crying baby is jarring and horrible, but it's used very interesting and tastefully on this track. Boy, I've been watching you like the hawk in the sky that flies, but you were my prey. Boy, I promise you, if we keep bumping heads, I know that one of these days, we gotta hook it up. Probably we talk on the phone, but see, I don't know if that's good. I've been holding back this secret from you. I probably shouldn't tell it, but... If I, if I let you know, you can't tell nobody. Sometimes I'm goody-goody right now. Naughty, naughty. I loved everything about this track, in particular, Timbaland's production. And the lyrics were fun to listen to, and Aaliyah's vocals also were great. But it's also memorable. It's catchy. It has that hook that just pulls you in, and 
It's a track that makes you want to listen to it again. Lyrically, the song is about a late night rendezvous with a special someone that needed to be kept on the hush. Now, it looks like this song was from the Dr. Doolittle soundtrack from 1998. <laughs> I honestly don't think I've ever seen that movie. I think I might have seen it once when I was a kid with Eddie Murphy. Now this song, Just Like I Care For You, was a big deal. Rolling Stone even recognized the track as one of the greatest songs of all time. It's also regarded as one of the best songs from the 1990s as well. I mean, if this song was released today in 2021, it would blow up the charts. I kid you not. But let's be real, anything Aaliyah released in the 90s and early 2000s, if it was to be released today by another artist, it would have blown up the charts. Any song Aaliyah released back then, whether it be a single or a non-single, it would have lit up the charts today in 2021. I think this calls for a spritzer moment. <laughs> That's how hot these songs are so far. But anyway, let's move on to track three, Don't Know What To Tell Ya. That was track three, Don't Know What To Tell Ya, and Timbaland, he is a musical wizard. He really is. I don't know what to tell ya, incarceration's what I'm facing when I'm with you. You're watching my every move, trying to pick up on some clues. We play 20 questions every time I walk in or out the door. What do you bother for? Get comfortable, it's yours. It's gonna take T-R-U-S-T -T to keep our L-O-V-E. And it looks like this guy compares Aaliyah to his prior girlfriend. Don't compare me to your last one, I can't help it. She was a fast one, a sassy one. I'm a classy one. <laughs> yeah, she was a trashy hoe. I'm not a trashy hoe, I'm the classy one. She was the fast one, I'm the slow one. And that's that, buddy. This track is probably my least favorite out of the first three tracks I've listened to already. I Care For You, Are You That Somebody, and Don't Know What To Tell Ya. But this is still a song I would love to listen to again, more so for the production. I'm not the biggest fan of when artists spell words in their songs, like T-R-U-S-T and L-O-V-E. However, there's one exception. R-E-S-P-C-T. Now this song was supposed to be for Aaliyah's third studio album from 2001, but failed to make the final cut. What I also like about this track is there's a sense of empowerment and knowing your self-worth. I can't deny or lie, I tried to put up with you, these insecurities every day pushing my love away. Another great Aaliyah song and I thoroughly enjoy myself, so let's move on to the fourth track, Miss You. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
That was track four, Miss You. And this is another solid track that I enjoy listening to. It's very calming and relaxing. Her vocals, but also the general beat of the song. And the birds chirping was also quite nice and pleasant. And overall, I just liked the general vibe of the track. I really liked the melody of the chorus as well. It's been too long and I'm lost without you. What am I gonna do? Said I've been needing you, wanting you, wondering if you're the same and who's been with you. Is your heart still mine? I want to cry sometimes. I miss you. Aww. Off to college, yes you went, straight from high school, you up and left me, we were close friends and lovers, did everything for one another, now you're gone, and I'm lost without you here now. So, it looks like this was some sort of high school love, and he went off to college after high school, and that was the end of their relationship, and she was left in tears, and she's wondering if he's with someone new, and if he is still hers. She's wondering if perhaps one day he might come back to her because she misses him. Now this is another song that was meant for her third self-titled album called Aaliyah from 2001. Aaliyah has one of those voices that if one of her exes was to hear her voice singing one of these songs, then he would instantly go back to her because her voice is that sensual, has that much emotion and meaning. So let's move on to the next track, Don't Worry. <laughs> This is a solid Aaliyah song, but to me, it wasn't that memorable. It's not really an Aaliyah song I would listen to again. I personally think the highlights of the song are her vocals and the overall production. I wasn't blown away with the production on this track like I was with all the others. And it doesn't really have that memorable, catchy hook that pulls you in. It ain't what you think, you still got me, so don't worry. Don't worry about it, don't worry about me. Even though it seems you're losing me and things ain't what they used to be, baby, I ain't gonna leave, don't worry. And then she goes on to say, I was headed out to Cali for a show, told you that on Tuesday I'll be home, but left a message on your voicemail saying I call you later to inform you I'm alright. Now you call it just to tell me that you heard, I was seen in a Bentley with my girls. So on the way to a spot where people hang, but nothing's changed, there's no need for you to worry about me. So Aaliyah is traveling, she's going to all these different places like Cali to see shows with her friends and what have you, but her boyfriend is suspicious, perhaps he's worried for her safety, so she has to call him and be like, this is where I am blah blah blah, or maybe he's suspicious that perhaps she's cheated on him. So don't worry about me, it's not what it seems, don't worry. So let's move on to Come Over featuring Tank. Just got my bags 
and I'm headed to the car. Um, wait a minute. My battery's low. Let me. Hi. Just wanting to hold you, embrace you. I want to. Come on, come on to see you. Come over, can I come over? That was Come Over featuring Tank, and I wasn't, I wasn't the biggest fan of this track, unfortunately. I did like her vocals, obviously. Her vocals were probably the highlight, but I didn't like the constant repetition of Come Over to See You, Come Over Tonight. Can I come over? Can I come over? Get with ya, come over, come over, can I come over, come over, come over, come over, can I come over, come over, come over. <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> I do understand the reasoning behind that though, because it is a very slow, sensual song. I know you're asleep, but you're on my mind, and I'm wide awake, and I want to stop by, so can you get up and get out of the bed? I just want to hold you, embrace you, I want you, look at you and tell you how much I love you. Can I come over? She wants to be with this person, she wants to hold them, they want to have sex, I guess, be intimate, so it is a very sensual beautiful song. Okay, so you know what? I did listen to the song for a few more minutes and it has grown on me, so I actually do like the song. It's not one of the favorite tracks from this compilation album so far, but I would listen to it again. I wouldn't listen to it all the time, but the more I listen to it, the more it does grow on me. But one cannot deny the overall sensuality of not just the lyrics, but also her vocals as well. There's a sense of yearning for this guy. She wants to come over tonight because she's desperate to touch this person. It's still not one of my favorites on this compilation album so far, but I still think it's a solid, sexy Aaliyah song. So let's move on to Erica Kane. Oh god, it just keeps going on and on. <laughs> That was Erica Cade. She's Erica, 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 Erica Cade. She's Erica, 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 Erica. <laughs> First and foremost, I need to know who this Erica Cade is. <laughs> Erica Cade is a fictional character from the American ABC daytime soap opera All My Children. Really? <laughs> the character was portrayed by actress Susan Lucci. But why make a song about her? <laughs> Aaliyah recorded a song about drug addiction called Erica Cade, where the character's name was used as a metaphor for cocaine. Oh, but why use... I mean, I get it, Erica Cade, cocaine. But why... I don't know, the song just overall is quite confusing to me. Back on the block, she's at it again. She'll be your friend as long as you spend. I know she's torn, 
whole families apart. She'll shoot a poison arrow straight through your heart. This is the day for Erica Kane. There's nothing to lose, none for her to gain. She'll make an honest man steal from his folks and drain a million man till he go broke. Okay, so I'm actually reading the lyrics now and I am putting two and two together now. I do think this is the most intriguing song I've listened to so far. I like the story behind it and I still don't know how I feel about it. It's not really an Aaliyah song I would listen to again. I still find the whole she's Erica, 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 the whole repetition of Erica. I didn't really like that part, even though I understand the whole metaphor of cocaine and Erica Kane and what have you. I think I'm slowly beginning to realize why Aaliyah keeps repeating Erica, Erica Kane during the entire song because it's an addiction. Erica, Erica, Erica. That's all you can think of. That's all you want. The drug, the cocaine. It's an addiction. She's Erica, 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 Erica. So, okay, so I'm finally, I'm finally putting two and two together. It's all coming together in my head. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying about Come Over, the prior track, how she keeps repeating, come over, I want to come over, let me come over. It's because she's so desperate to be with this person. That's all she could think about. They are on her mind. So that's why she keeps repeating, come over, can I come over, come over, come over, because she's pleading. She wants to see and touch this person. So I do like the story behind the song. I find it very intriguing, but it's still not really an Aaliyah song I would listen to again. But anyway, that wraps up the I Care For You compilation album. And now we're gonna move on to part two of this video which will be Ultimate Aaliyah, the posthumous box set, released in 2005, so four years after her death. I do think I covered all the songs I needed to on I Care For You, the I Care For You compilation album. If I did miss a song or two, I apologize, but I think I listened to all the songs I needed to on that compilation album. So hopefully I picked all the right songs. So we're gonna kick off Ultimate Aaliyah with are you feeling me? And that was Are You Feeling Me? And I liked the switch that happened halfway through. It slowed down a little bit towards the second half of the track. Even Timbaland himself says switch, and he kind of switches things around. And we hear more of his vocals on the second half. He says, who can it be? Are you feeling yes, yo? Are you feeling yes, yo? Who is the best making these beats? Who can it be? I don't know who can it be, Timbaland. It can only be you. I mean, who else could create these sorts of beats other than you and your music wizardry, honestly? It's you, Timbaland. So I do think he's a little self-indulgent on this track, I won't lie, but I still enjoyed the track as a whole. I'm the girl in your life. I'm the one you call wife, and I need to know, are you feeling me, yo? Is there anyone else that can do it the best. Give you things you need. Well, it must be me. I got very big dreams and the fantasies, but I need to know, are you feeling me, yo? I mean, I wasn't absolutely crazy about this track, and I would listen to it again. It's a pleasant R&B pop song, but overall, it's not a go-to Aaliyah song, in my opinion. So let's move on to Messed Up. Oh, 
Oh, I think I've heard this song already. Where is this song from? It's the chorus that did it for me. I remember hearing this song before. Which album? I think it was her third album. Oh god, I'm gonna have to go back in time for a second and figure this out. <gasps> Wait. Okay, so I'm looking at her Wikipedia page. And at the bottom, for any music artist, it has a list of their discography of all their albums by year. It says here that her, I guess, estate or whatever, her record label, is putting out an album called Unstoppable that's to be released this year in 2021. I had no idea. This is my first time learning about this. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna have to keep my eyes and ears open for that. That's exciting! 20 years after her death. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess they still had a lot of songs from her locked away in the vault, so we'll see. Okay, so it looks like Messed Up was a hidden track on the US and Canadian editions of her third studio album, Aaliyah. I must have listened to that song when I did my Aaliyah video for her third album, but I must have because it sounds familiar and that would have been the only time I would have heard that song, so I must have already listened to the song. <laughs> I really do enjoy the chorus of this song. I think it's catchy, it hooks you in, and I like the overall production. It does remind me of a Janet Jackson song. I think I do prefer this track over the prior track, Are You Feeling Me? And I wouldn't mind listening to this song again. Her vocals are great, I like the lyrics as well. Better get your shit together, can't keep on holding on waiting for you, and baby, there's where you messed up. You keep on acting like, I really need a brother, man, I don't need a brother, better get your shit together. So let's move on to Come Back in One Piece, featuring DMX. There we go, okay, okay, don't do me greasy. Okay. You really know what a dog is. Dog is a What? What? Dog is a Come on. They're actually barking. Come back in one piece featuring a DMX. Wow. Another very intriguing song on the album. And I do want to say that I hated the first minute with DMX's rapping. I don't mind DMX's rapping. I just didn't like the lyrics of the first minute of the song. I liked DMX's rapping in the second part of the song. It was more brief, I guess. And it just kept going on and on and on. It was a little jarring, especially with the dogs barking, the grrrr, and the ar ar. Whoa, that was my attempt at doing a barking dog. Ar ar. It's like a poodle. Ar ar. Whoa. But you get what I mean. I almost feel like it was too literal. And do you really know what a dog needs? A dog needs a grrrr. It was a little childish, in my opinion. I really do think they should have cut out the first minute and just started the song with Aaliyah's part. I liked Aaliyah's part. I probably would have liked the song more if it was just Aaliyah and just a portion of DMX's rapping. It would have been a more cohesive, stronger song. It was also way too long. It was over four minutes. That's one issue I have with some of Aaliyah's songs is sometimes her songs tend to drag on longer than they should. I do like the lyrics of the song though. I think they're cute. 
Yo, you can go with your dogs. If you make this promise to me, you make it back in one piece. You're making moves. I'm making moves. Yo, we cool. Lay on your paws. I got your back. If you fall, nothing's too big. Nothing's too small. Just go ball. <laughs> I mean, it's a cute song. It reminds me of Who Let the Dogs Out. <sighs> oh, you don't even want to go there. <laughs> who let the dogs out? Who? 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 Ha! Ha! Oh. Okay, now this song is from a soundtrack called the Romeo Must Die soundtrack from 2000. I don't think I've ever seen this movie and it stars... Does it star Aaliyah? Who stars in this movie? Oh, it does star Aaliyah! Yeah, I've never seen this movie. Okay, so I will say this song does fit a movie soundtrack, I won't lie, even though I don't know what happens in Romeo Must Die, this does sound like a song that could have been part of a soundtrack. It looks like there was a little bit of praise for this song. It was a little bit of a big deal, and people did enjoy it. People enjoyed the dog metaphors and what have you. The dog metaphor of proclaiming loyalty for his girl. So that's nice. I like the story of the song, but... I did think it was a little stupid. <laughs> but like I said already, the highlight of the song for me was Aaliyah and the overall, I guess, story and meaning of the song. So let's move on to I Don't Wanna. I Don't Wanna, and this is a solid Aaliyah song. It's a traditional sounding Aaliyah song, and it's good. It's not mind-blowing. I would listen to it again. I don't think there's anything particularly special about this track. I did like the melody of the chorus, especially when she sings, I Don't Wanna Be Alone. I don't wanna be I don't want to be, be without you, be without you. I don't want to live, live without you, live without you. I don't want to go, go without you. I don't want to be alone. I really do like that part. When we hooked up, we sat down, made an agreement. We vowed that we'd always be together through whatever. We said that no one would ever get between us. This love would never leave us. That was a while ago, but now lately, it feels like, I mean, I feel like all we do is fight every single night. I just want to go back, take it way back, all the way back. Can we start again? And this is a constant theme through a lot of Aaliyah's songs, how she meets the man of her dreams and she falls in love with him. He falls in love with her. The beginning is great, but then slowly but surely, the relationship deteriorates and they have arguments and they fight and perhaps he cheats or she cheats and it just turns out to be a mess. So Aaliyah says, let's try to make this work. I don't want to live without you. I need you. I love you. But we keep fighting. So what's going to happen? I don't want to be alone. So I feel like Aaliyah is one of those girls who just can't be by herself for long periods of time. She always needs someone to touch and to be around, to love. She always needs a companion. Now this is another song from the Romeo Must Die soundtrack, and it's also from Next Friday. 
the original motion picture soundtrack from 2000, another film I've never seen or heard before. <laughs> And Aaliyah stars in this movie as well. I did like this track, and I would listen to it again. So let's move on to Man Undercover. That was Bad Undercover, and I thought this was a sweet song. I quite enjoyed myself. I like, obviously, the production. Timbaland's production is fire, like always. And I will say, I also like Timbaland's cheekiness in some of these songs when it comes to his lyrics and vocals. Very tongue-in-cheek, a little... What's the word? He's a little... What's the word I'm trying to reach for? Oh, I can't think of it. <laughs> There's something smooth about Timbaland. Just the way he comes across in these songs when he's rapping. His vocals, his playfulness, his... I don't know, there's something alluring about that. <laughs> I think it's the confidence. He seems like a very confident guy. A man undercover, smooth black brother, fly to the bone, don't need no Gucci sweater to make you look better. You can wear what you own. I love you. I love the way that you smile. You the type of guy that got his own style. You don't need to impress Aaliyah with these fancy name brand labels when it comes to your clothing or these expensive vehicles. She likes her man undercover, so she doesn't like her man flashy or out there with the fancy clothing, the Gucci, the expensive cars. So this is a song that overall I did enjoy listening to, but just like a few of the other songs, I did think this song dragged on longer than it needed to. It was over four minutes. I really don't mind long tracks on a CD. I like longer songs. I like shorter songs too, but I don't think this song warranted being over four minutes. But anyway, let's move on to John Blaze. <laughs>
that was John Blaze, and the song is pretty self-explanatory. She said, boy, you blow in my mind, boy, you blow my mind, you look so fine in every way. And you keep me so amazed, I'm so amazed, why do I feel this way? Could it be your John Blaze? Is John Blaze an actual person, or is it just her expressing how hot this person is? He is John Blaze. Johnny Blaze. That's how hot he is. Some people have said that the song could be a metaphor for marijuana, perhaps. Johnny Blaze is also the name of Ghost Rider. The fictional character from Marvel Comics. <laughs> Now, Missy Elliott was featured on this track as well, and overall, I didn't really care for this song. To me, it didn't really stick out, and I didn't find it particularly interesting. To me, it does sound like a throwaway track. It's just kind of meh. But anyway, let's move on to I Am Music. It sounds like bad karaoke. <laughs> I am music and that was slightly terrifying. I'm really curious to know what you guys think of this song but this track is turning me off from music in general. <laughs> I really hated all of the vocals on this track with the exception of Aaliyah. Aaliyah's vocals on this track seemed random and out of place like why was she included on this track? Everyone else sounded drunk, and <laughs> the overall production was just confusing and noisy and all over the place. It sounds like a track that a group of kids created in their basement for music class, and they had to write a song and create a song about music. This is what they came up with. <laughs> It kind of sounds like a school project. I thought, I mean, it just, it wasn't my cup of tea. Definitely one of the worst Aaliyah songs I've ever listened to. <laughs> this song overall gets a big fat F. I don't see how anyone would want to listen to this song multiple times, let alone just one time. <laughs> but anyway, we have come to the end of this video. And we'll be checking out Hold On featuring Wyclef Sean. You know what? Good, good, good. I go through a lot since my baby girl's not here. I want you to hear my pain that I go through. Go through. It's been three years living this bad life. Yeah. I got a plan. I want to hop off and go. I demand the best for myself because all I know. I know you like my shoes because you walk in my shoes. And would you be prepared to see a lot of people yelling, We love you, Timberland. Life must go on. You 
must live on. That was Hold On featuring Wyclef Sean, and the track also features Timbaland and Magoo. And I think this track is more so a tribute song to Aaliyah. Aaliyah doesn't sing in this track, she's not actually featured on this track. So I guess it's more so a tribute. They do say Lili quite a bit on the track. Nah, Lili, me and Goo, we can't quit. I go through a lot since my baby girl's not here. Life ain't been the same for me. Lili, I miss you very much. I want you to hear my pain that I go through. It's been three years living this fast life. He said how he was stabbed. Once by my mom, Pops the other two, child abuse kid, ward of the state, I know it was the past, but I just can't shake. How you had a kid, beat me like a slave, I was only three, how could I misbehave? I didn't know better, you could teach me first, you said fuck that, then you beat me worse. So overall this is... A very powerful song lyrically, a lot of emotion, a lot of story, a lot of feelings. I liked the overall production of the track. I liked all three artists' inclusion on this track, like Wyclef Sean, Timbaland, and Magoo. It's a very passionate and meaningful way to wrap up not just this compilation album, but the overall era of Aaliyah and Timbaland's collaboration with Aaliyah. It's like the closing of this chapter on Timbaland's life and his career with Aaliyah. And it's also the closing chapter of Aaliyah's career. So that was all the tracks I set out to listen to from I Care For You and Ultimate Aaliyah. And I was impressed. I really was. These were great tracks. Of course, it's Aaliyah. Her voice, sensual like always, a very powerful voice, a very mature voice. And that was always one of the highlights of any of these Aaliyah songs. Her voice. Her magical, sophisticated, sultry, passionate voice. I also enjoyed the songwriting on these songs. They are typical sounding Aaliyah songs about breakups and relationships and falling in love and... All those typical themes we've come to expect from Aaliyah's music. But there's also a sense of passion and intimacy in these songs as well. So it's not just about the breakups and heartbreak and tears. It's about the thoughtfulness and I care for you, I love you, I miss you, I want to be with you. There's a sense of yearning in a lot of her songs. Another highlight for me was, of course, the overall production of these tracks, especially when Timbaland was included with the production. There is something quite confident about Timbaland, and I'm getting the impression that he isn't a very humble guy. He knows he's good, and there's something quite cocky about him. But there's also something quite cheeky and playful about his personality in these songs. I would listen to quite a few of these songs again. There were a few clunkers overall, in my opinion. I think my only real negative of some of these tracks is how some of them kind of dragged on longer than they should have. If I had to choose between the two compilation albums, I Care For You and Ultimate Aaliyah, I would choose the I Care For You compilation album, I do think it's a bit stronger. There are a few more disposable tracks on Ultimate Aaliyah, unfortunately. So what did you guys think of the tracks I've listened to, and what are your impressions of them? So it looks like that is officially a wrap on my Aaliyah discography journey. And from my understanding, a new album from Aaliyah will be dropping this year in 2021 called Unstoppable. That's what her Wikipedia page says, so who knows. And I will be uploading a video, I think, tomorrow. Tomorrow or next week, where I'll be watching some of her music videos. I'll be watching four of her music videos in one of my videos. So look forward to that video coming up very soon. And thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me, you can say, hey, how are you? And I'll see you next time. Take care.